What's that coming? What's going on? What's coming? Hey, Palmer, what is it? I don't know. Wait. Mac wants the flamethrower. Mac wants the what? That's what he said. Now move. Damn it. Stay back. Mac, what is it? This thing doesn't want to show itself. It wants to hide inside an imitation. It'll fight if it has to, but it's vulnerable out in the open. If it takes a sofa, then it has no more enemies. Nobody left to kill it. And then it's one. Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained, and today we'll be taking a look at one of the most terrifying creatures featured in film, known only as The Thing. The Thing is an extremely hostile, shape-shifting, extraterrestrial organism, and the primary antagonist of the 1982 sci-fi action film, The Thing. It's prequel, some video games, and literature, much of which has been covered on this channel. I'll be leaving links to some of these stories below, and I highly recommend that you guys check them out. The Thing has the ability to assimilate other life forms in order to survive and spread. The original physical characteristics of the thing are unknown, as it could have assimilated hundreds if not thousands of other species before it crashed on Earth. The thing is basically an ambush predator, isolating a potential victim or threat to consume and assume its form. In certain cases, usually when exposed or when the person it assimilated was fatally injured, the thing would discard all caution and defend itself by manifesting features that may be of its natural form, including tendrils, claws, and mouths. However, the thing's most dangerous aspect is its cells, each a functional life form that can be independent from the main body when severed by force, or when separated to assimilate and self-preserve. For this reason, it's necessary to destroy the body down to its cellular level via incineration. The thing's shape-shifting nature means that its biology can adapt to be the same as the organism it has replicated, or is in the process of replicating. The thing has the ability to reconstitute itself following immense damage, and is invulnerable to most conventional forms of attack. However, it is vulnerable to fire and potentially molecular acid, since they both destroy the creature at a cellular level. It is very tolerant of cold, placing itself in cryogenic stasis until found by unsuspecting victims. When changing form, it bursts open and allows a variety of strange and terrifying forms and bits of previously assimilated anatomy to emerge, such as tentacles, insect-like limbs, eyes, teeth, claws, even faces, eventually rearranging its cellular structure to mimic its desired shape. The thing is also capable of continuing normal functions even when lacking eyes, ears, a sense of smell, or other ways of interacting with its environment. In the 2011 prequel film, The Thing, American paleontologist Kate Lloyd discovered that the creature was unable to mimic non-living materials when she found a small pool of blood with metal fillings, surmising that the creature had spat them out during assimilation. In the original film, Dr. Blair conducted an autopsy, which revealed that the stray dog at the start of the film was an alien capable of absorbing and perfectly imitating other life forms. Realizing the implications of this, Blair quickly became withdrawn and suspicious of the others. He also reasoned that the probability that one of more of the team members may be infected by the intruder organism was 75%, and also that if the intruder organism reached civilized areas, the entire world population would be infected 27,000 hours from first contact. I'm gonna hide this tape when I'm finished. If none of us make it, at least there'll be some kind of record. The storm's been hitting us hard now for 48 hours. Windows found some shredded long johns, but the name tag was missing. They could be anybody's. Nobody... Nobody trusts anybody now. The thing is a shape-shifting organism, but it must come into contact with its host in order to begin the process of analyzing and copying its cellular structure. To do this, the cells begin digesting and replicating the host, eventually taking over the entire body. The thing will also only assimilate freshly killed or still living prey, and any organism that has been dead for an extended period of time will be ignored by it. This may be due to it being largely ineffective to more intelligent prey if it mimicked a member of their society that was known to have been killed. 
Copper was killed by the Norris thing, biting off both his hands, and so presumably was exposed to the thing's infection. Yet his corpse showed no signs of reviving as an imitation and post-mortem blood test came up negative. Presumably, he bled out so quickly that the infection had no time to spread before his biomass was rendered useless by death. After the thing is assimilated in an organism, it's capable of imitating them exactly down to their memories, characteristics, mannerisms, and all of their traits. Even defects like Norris's weak heart are replicated, although this is most likely the creature acting, as it doesn't actually need oxygenated blood to survive like we do. When a part of the thing becomes cut in two, two of those pieces become their own creatures and operate separately. For example, when the Norris's thing head grows legs and attempts to escape. The replication varies depending on the occurrences at hand and whether or not the attacking thing is smaller or is injured. If the assaulting thing in question is injured in any way, much smaller than the prey or under pressure, it will usually just add biomass to itself and either mimic the prey or add the mass to its original frame to increase its size and strength to counteract any threats within the area. If, however, the thing successfully assaults its prey in a safe location, it will just feed on it and make a copy of the victim, then revert back to its cover before searching for another victim to assimilate. The thing only has assimilation and self-preservation in mind with every action that it takes. As seen in the films, the thing will selfishly save itself or even attack other forms of itself in order to avert attention and suspicion. When the thing is left alone with a suitable target, it will begin to split open and fire out tendrils which grab the target and begin to assimilate it. In certain cases, after discovery or a high chance of discovery, the thing will sometimes perform divide and conquer tactics, as in the case of the Edvard thing which split up into three separate forms. One engaged and began assimilating Jonas, another limb scuttled away for potential assimilation in a safer location, and the main body of the Edvard thing killed Derek and successfully assimilated Adam Finch. This is also performed, albeit much less successfully, by the Norris thing. When exposed, things will react depending on how big they are compared to the threat. Smaller things will generally attempt to escape and ambush prey when the individual is more vulnerable. However, a larger thing will usually attack its prey head on and attempt to overwhelm any hostiles instead of escaping. Although, if it has not completely lost its cover, it will still attempt to flee. The thing's level of intelligence is wholly dependent on its size. McCready's blood test is directly dependent on this idea by proving that a smaller sample of the creature, such as a petri dish of blood, would defend itself violently for self-preservation, whereas a large creature, like a human imitation, would be smart enough to stay hidden. The novel has Mac explaining his theory in greater detail than the film with this passage. When attacked, it looks like even a fragment of one of these things will try to survive as best it's able, even a sample of its blood. Of course, there's no higher nervous system, no brain to suppress a natural instinct like that if it's in the best interest of the larger whole to do so. The cells have to act instinctively instead of intelligently, protect themselves from freezing, say, or from incineration, the kind that might be caused by a hot needle, for instance. This perhaps also accounts for why the Norris spider head scurried away from its hiding spot when it did. Maybe its body mass was not sufficiently large enough to form an intelligent brain center, and as a result of this, it didn't know enough not to blow its cover when the men still presented a danger to it. On the other hand, a full-sized thing is extremely intelligent, and is theorized as having the combined intelligences of all the organisms it's ever assimilated. This is borne out by the fact that the Blair thing, having likely been a product of either the Norwegian dog directly or one of its descendants, showed that it had the intelligence to build a non-terrestrial ship out of helicopter and tractor parts. The Blair thing essentially inherited the intelligences of its previous organisms, the knowledge being passed into the newest form to be assimilated. The film, literature, and video game series has outlined several methods of distinguishing an imitation from an original creature, based around either blood testing or searching for missing inorganic components. The blood tests work by coercing autonomous thing cells to act in self-preservation, for example, crawling away from a hot needle. Another blood test variant is the blood serum test, where a suspected imitation's blood is mixed with uncontaminated blood, which would hypothetically react if the creature was an imposter. The 2002 video game, The Thing, added a further method of testing in the blood test hypo, a portable blood testing device which exposes a suspect's blood to a caustic chemical agent. As mentioned earlier, the only way to effectively kill the thing completely was to incinerate it with fire or obliterate it with high explosives, although powerful electric shocks might also prove effective as well, as the Norris Thing acted in self-defense when Copper attempted to defibrillate it. 
The novel Who Goes There and the Unmade miniseries feature electrocution as the best way to permanently kill it. And while the smaller things died fairly quickly, the larger things took much longer to kill and were known to even survive such attacks, although they would be incapacitated and heavily damaged. In a deleted scene of the 2011 prequel, it was also hinted that the crashed UFO's original aliens known as pilots had first discovered the thing whilst on a planet zoological expedition and had stored it for examination. The thing eventually managed to escape and attack them one by one. In an attempt to destroy the thing, the surviving alien pilot tried to crash the spaceship into Earth, but was then later killed and assimilated by the thing, which managed to survive the crash and escape the spacecraft, only to end up freezing in the Arctic climate. In the novel that inspired the movies titled Who Goes There, the thing is actually rather different in several ways. For starters, it has a true form, a blue haired creature with three red eyes, and rather than assume the horrific transformations in the movies, it simply reverted back to this form when exposed or when assimilating. While the details of the assimilation process were kept very vague, it appeared to be nowhere as virulent as in the movies, as it was seen defending itself with weapons and could ostensibly be killed in ways other than incineration. The characters also attempt to make an antibodies test by way of combining a suspected person's blood with that of a sled dog that has been conditioned with presumably safe human blood. There's nothing else I can do. Just wait. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the thing. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah. Oh. 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 Oh.